Hi folks, and welcome back to the Frugal Radio Channel. Today we're going to talk about how trunking systems work, and two pieces of software, UniTrunker and SDR Trunk, which I use with my software-defined radios to decode and monitor public safety systems. Trunked systems are very popular in urban areas and increasingly are being rolled out across entire states and provinces. Some of them carry a lot of radio traffic. Some are analog and some are digital, but what they all have in common is that they are a frequency hopping system. In my area, the following agencies use trunk networks. The city police, the fire service, the EMS, the search and rescue services, community patrols, the Office of Emergency Management, and the City Public Works, which incorporates the roadways, the dispatchers, the water plants and waterworks and treatment areas, uh, waste management, fleet services, surveyors, and so on. Also, the city transit system runs on the local trunking network here. So that's buses, trains, the inspectors, the track crews, security personnel, and tech um, guys, every, everybody's on there. And also, I've heard lots of special events using the trunk systems in this area too. So whenever there's festivals happening, you can often listen in to the security or the VIP uh, people that are helping out with the uh, important guests. Uh, I've also heard movie productions going and picking up movie stars from different sites, bringing them to filming locations and so on. So there's an awful lot that you can hear on a trunked radio system. So how do trunk systems work? Basically, these systems are run by computers which broadcast information to all radios on the network through a control channel. On the right, you can see that LCN number 4, frequency 866.7875 MHz, is highlighted in red. That is indicating that it is the active control channel. If you were to tune an SDR or scanner to that frequency, this is the sound you would hear. That's the sound of the computer controlling all the radios logged on to the system. That means that all radios must monitor the control channel to know which frequency to listen to. Virtual channels are created by the system administrators and are assigned talk group numbers. The talk group number is listed in the target column of Unitrunker. When a user presses the PTT key on the radio, a request is sent to the control computer it then assigns a frequency and all radios that are logged on to that talk group switch to the assigned frequency so they can hear the transmission. When the transmission is responded to, the same process happens again and typically a different radio frequency is assigned by the computer for the reply. This means that if you were to just monitor one frequency, say LCN1 866.0375 MHz, you would miss most of the calls on the system, hearing a maximum of 5% of all radio traffic. You would also hear calls from different agencies, so you wouldn't be able to make much sense of what was going on. Trunk systems have become so popular because you can create several hundred talk groups or virtual channels using only a small number of physical frequencies. For example, this EDAC system had over 350 active talk groups at one time, yet it only required 20 actual frequencies to run. Trunking is a very efficient use of the radio spectrum. Another major benefit of trunked systems is that multiple sites at different locations can be linked together. This means you can deploy a trunked network throughout multiple buildings. My local university has several campuses in different parts of the city, but because the trunk system they use is interlinked, their radios work on every campus. Neighbouring towns and cities can be linked, even entire states or provinces. This can provide a very robust wide area communications network. Unitrunker is an older piece of software that can decode control channel data from Motorola Type 2, EDAX, MPT1327 and P25 systems. It works very well with RTL-based software-defined radios, although it can also be used with scanners modified with a discriminator tap or a few scanners through the line-out port. You need to program it with the trunking system information, which you can generally find on Radio Reference. Simply visit radioreference.com, select Databases, choose your state or province, select the Trunked Systems tab. Then you can click on the system you wish to monitor. Radio Reference lists the system type, 
frequencies in use and the talk groups that have been identified. You can then program the system, frequencies and talk groups into your Unitrunker. If you are a subscriber to the radio reference site, you can also import the data directly into the Unitrunker software. Here is a look at some of the identified talk groups listed in my system. Now, this is not a Unitrunker tutorial video, so I will not go into detail on how to perform the setup but let me show you what it looks like when it is decoding control channel data and using a second STR to follow the voice traffic. Control train three. Train three. I have a sleeper in my Martin North Center car uh, and I'm getting these two bumped off so I'd like to let you know. In 10 I'll take a description. Indigenous male. About 25, black hoodie with a Blue Jays baseball cap, blue backpack, blue jeans, white Adidas running shoes. And here's what it looks like when using the same two software defined radios to monitor an EDAC system and a P25 system simultaneously. You will notice I use different colours to differentiate between different agencies. The other piece of software I like to use on P25 systems is SDR Trunk, although it decodes the other system types listed here as well. I use the cutting edge alpha versions which can have a few bugs but honestly I find them to be rather stable. Finding it online isn't the easiest, so let me show you where to get it. Do a search for SDR Trunk, then follow the link to the GitHub page. Scroll down to the End User Instructions heading. Then click the Releases link. When the page opens up, scroll down to the Assets section and click the little black triangle. From there, you will be able to select and download either a Linux, Mac or Windows version for your computer. SDR Trunk is great at decoding P25 voice calls in addition to the control channel data. My local system is a simulcast or LSM system. Because of this, my scanners struggle to demodulate the audio and they miss more than 50% of all voice traffic. Have a listen to my old BCD996 picking up a transmission. Notice how broken the audio sounds despite the fact it shows a full signal strength. Now compare that to the quality of audio being received through my software defined radio. Uh, car 3, do you know, has there been any further update from any of the chiefs or the city if we're supposed to put these fires out? Is there any further direction on anything to do with these camps? Another great feature of SDR Trunk is the ability to directly record activity by talk group. This really helps with talk group user identification. You can also set up the software to stream specific talk groups with Broadcastify. SDR Trunk includes a versatile import section that allows you to connect with the radio reference databases and makes programming easier. I am beginning to grow quite fond of SDR Trunk, but I found it more challenging to set up than Unitrunker. Thankfully, there are some great tutorial videos on YouTube by enthusiasts who have been using it longer than me, and I recommend viewing those if you'd like to give SDR Trunk a try. Here is a short compilation of clips showing SDR Trunk in use. Pump 10, pump 17, ladder 1, rescue 2, tanker 17, alarm. 101-20-135 Avenue Northwest. At Venta Nursing Home, Channel Working 5, Map Zone 23, Complex Card 24, Bravo.
Morning, this is Homework from Channel 4. Good afternoon, you're flying 8506-121F. Call team from the monitoring company reporting a hallway smoke detector zone 6 activation. Okay. Yeah, just be on the lookout there. And uh, Inspector Pollard is just uh, looking for you uh, to give you those masks. So she'll, she'll try to grab you before you go into the division. Perfect, thank you. Control Bravo 2. Bravo 2, go ahead. Control, can you show me 1036? And we'll be on shift for another two hours. 10 4. Dispatch, Pump 5. Yeah, just uh, confirm uh, alarms are set off due to cooking, no smoke or fire, no damage. Uh, alarm has been reset, and we're going to return back to service. Hi, coffee. Thank you. 2015 to base. Uh, change out complete. 10 4. Thank you. As always, thanks for tuning in to the channel today. I hope you've been inspired to do some trunk system monitoring with your SDRs. Coming soon, in episode 7, will be the Trunking Software Part 2, where we will look at decoding popular DMR and Nextend networks. In the meantime, if you can help me out by hitting the like button on this episode, I would be grateful. If you are already subscribed to the channel, thank you for coming back today. Your support means a lot. And for those new to Frugal Radio, you can track along with the channel just by subscribing. If you want to ensure you see the next episode as soon as it's released, then tap that notification bell icon as well. That's it from the shack today. Keep safe out there. This is Frugal Radio, over and out. <coughs>